fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver. The Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Boxer Ben fights hard and fair, so in the ring you kids beware. He's dynamite because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. Cheerios, the cereal everybody loves. No other cereal looks like Cheerios. It's shaped like little letter O's. No other cereal tastes like Cheerios. It's the only ready-to-eat cereal with this fresh toasted oat flavor. No other cereal is like Cheerios. You see, Cheerios is made from oats. And every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Have Cheerios every morning. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'm Silver. Hooray! Willard Benton was seemingly a quiet, friendly man of good character and steady habits. For several years, he had been cashier of the Rock Point Bank and owned a small ranch outside of town. His fellow townsmen would have been surprised and shocked if they'd heard Benton talking to his ranch hands in the bunkhouse one afternoon. Men in the Rock Point Mining Company transferred their account to the Stockton Bank last week. Tomorrow is company payday, and the payroll will be coming in on the stage from Stockton. Over $10,000 in cash. You figuring on grabbing that payroll, boss? Yes, the stage will pass through Pine Valley just before noon. That's where you'll pull the robbery. Then head for here and stay at this ranch until the excitement blows over. I'll come out tomorrow afternoon to divide the cash. Hiya, right. boss. I ran onto something on the way back from town that'll interest you. What is it, Russ? I turned off the trail to water my horse in the stream near some cottonwoods. I saw a couple of riders turn into the cottonwood grove from the trail. They didn't see me. What about them? One of them wore a black mask and rode a white stallion. The uh, other was an engine. Holy mackerel, the Lone Ranger and his engine partner. I think we'd better forget about grabbing the payroll from the stage, boss. Yeah, well, Arizona's right. It'd be risky with those two hombres around. We'll go through with the holdup. As for the masked man and his Indian friend, we'll kill them. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had heard of the gang's operations and had come to the territory to help capture them. That night, the moon was bright, and as the two men were sleeping... Shadowy figures moved cautiously through the brush toward the clearing in the cottonwood grove. The great horse Silver raised his head and caught their scent. He pawed the ground restlessly and whinnied a low warning. The Lone Ranger stirred slightly, then opened his eyes. Experience had taught him not to sit up or otherwise indicate alarm. Instead, he slowly reached out and touched Tonto, then spoke in a low voice. Tonto. Uh-huh. Me here, Silver, get water. Move quickly. We'll slide out of the blankets and crawl into the shadows. Come on. Uh-huh. The two men moved into the shadows, leaving the blanket still rolled. A moment later, they heard cautious movements in the brush and heard a voice whisper. There they are. Let them have it. The Lone Ranger and Tonto immediately fired in the direction from which the shots had come. Oh, my ear. Let's get away from here. They're leaving. Let's get to the horses, Tonto. Uh, you think them part of outlaw gang? It's possible. Hurry, we'll settle the horses. Uh. <laughs> In a matter of moments, Silver and Scout were bridled and saddled. Out of the moon's bridge. They try to find the trail of those men and follow them. Easy, easy city, big fella. Easy, fella. Come on, Silver. Come on, Scout. The outlaws, surprised and disconcerted by the sudden turn of events in the grove, rode hurriedly to town. 
telling the others to go on to the ranch and report to Willard Benton, Russ went to the doctor's to have his ear bandaged. Later, he entered the cafe. When Russ approached the bar, he noticed the sheriff standing there and staring at his bandaged ear. What happened, Russ? Somebody wing you with a bullet? Russ's first impulse was to deny the sheriff's observation. Then, changing his mind quickly, he said... Well, yeah, that's right, Sheriff. It's just a nick, but that bullet came mighty close. Glad you're here so I can tell you about it. You see, someone tried to ambush me while I was riding in from the ranch tonight. You see who it was? Well, I got a look at him before I lit out. One wore a mask, the other was a redskin. I figured they're a couple of the outlaw gang. Where did it happen? Oh, about a mile back along the main trail. They came riding from a grove of cottonwoods to the left. Well, the moon is bright tonight. I'll form a posse and go out there and try to find them. You better come along. Uh, you and the posse go ahead. I'll join you later. All right. I, golly, this could be the break I've been waiting for. That masked man in Indian may lead us right to the gang's hideout. <laughs> Meantime, by the light of the full moon, the Lone Ranger and Tonto carefully studied the ground until they found the tracks left by the outlaws. Then they started in the direction of Rock Point. The Lone Ranger was saying, The tracks lead toward town, Tonto. That's right. Look, Kimasabi, riders coming over hill yonder. Look like posse. I think I know that, Sheriff Tonto. We'll stop and tell him what happened. Uh, hold him, hold, hold. Yeah, okay. Meantime, the sheriff and the posse saw the two horsemen. As they closed the distance between them, the sheriff spoke excitedly. Hey, it's bright enough to see that one of those hombres is mask and the other is an Indian. They're the ones we came to find, so have your guns ready, men. All right, sheriff. We ought to gun them down while we have the chance, sheriff. Hold it. They can't get away now. We'll take them prisoners. Hold it. All right, reach, both of you. The Lone Ranger looked at the sheriff's face carefully, then spoke quietly to Tonto. Do as he says, Tonto. I was mistaken. He's a stranger. We're reaching, sheriff. Hey, sheriff. Those are the two hombres that ambushed Rush. You better watch them close. We're not outlaws, Sheriff, and we didn't ambush anyone. We came here... Shut to... up! You're wearing a mask. Well, we know you two hombres jumped a ranch hand back along the trail a while ago. He came to town and told me about it. Lucky for you, your bullet just nicked his ear. Yeah, right. Even covered, men. I'll ride close and disarm him. All right, Sheriff. Get up there. The Sheriff's horse moved in slowly. The Lone Ranger waited tensely, and as the sheriff reached out to take his guns, he dropped his hands in a lightning-like move. No, you don't. Hey. Threw one of his guns and held it against the sheriff's side. Reach, Sheriff. Hey. Be quick about it. What the... Hey, he's got a gun on the sheriff. Gosh, he moved like lightning. Sure did. Order your men to throw their guns into the brush, Sheriff. No, dog. Go on it. Um, we'll throw our guns, Sheriff. He might fight you. Yeah, yeah. 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 Them all throw guns, Kim Osami. Good. I'll take the sheriff's. You'll find your gun with the other Sheriff. You might get away right now, mister. But by thunder, we'll trail you, and next time we'll gun you both on sight. Let's go, Tonto. Come on, Tonto. Get him up. Come. After they were sure they had covered their trail sufficiently, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode the back trail into town. While the masked man waited in the shadows, Tonto went into the cafe, hoping to find the man with a wounded ear. Later, he returned to report. Feller in cafe. Had bandage on the ear, came hubby. Did he see you? No. No, me stay out of sight. Good. We'll wait across from the cafe until he leaves. Let's go. After waiting for some time in the shadows, the Lone Ranger and Tonto saw Russ wearing a patch of white on one ear. Leave the cafe and mount his horse at the hitch rack. Come on, get up there. Oh, there he goes. We got Silver and Skelton following. Easy, easy, Scout, easy, fella. Come on, Silver. Come up, Scout. Meanwhile, Russ rode directly to the Willard Benton Ranch, where he put his horse into the corral. Then he entered the bunkhouse, where Will, Arizona, and two others were playing cards. Men tell me you got clipped on the ear by a bullet, Russ. Yeah, I was lucky to get away alive. Those two hombres were too smart for us. The failure of you men to get them means they'll be on their guard from now on. Yeah, and maybe on our trail. Oh, but don't worry about that. The sheriff and posse are out hunting for him right now. Russ briefly told about his conversation with the sheriff at the cafe, saying... Those two hombres will be kept busy avoiding the posse from now on. Well, take extra precautions to cover your trail after the stage holdup. You're still going through with it? Yes, 10000 is a lot of cash. You four men rob the stage and come back here and wait for me. Now, let's turn in and get some sleep. <laughs> I have to be on the job at the bank early tomorrow. And forget the Lone Ranger... I'll outsmart any move he may make. Unknown to Will Benton and his men, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had reached the ranch just behind Russ. While he stabled his horse, they had left Silver and Scout back among the trees and made their way through the brush and darkness to the partly open back window of the bunkhouse where they could hear the conversation. 
When Will Benton rose to go to the ranch house, the masked man and Indian hastily returned to their horses. Them members of outlaw gang, Kimasabi. Yes, we've learned the leaders, a man named Benton. He's connected with a bank in Rock Point. Them plan to rob the stage tomorrow. Maybe if we tell Sheriff, he'll catch a gang. Otto, I'm sure the Sheriff has returned to town by now. Well, after midnight. I have something in mind. Easy, steady. Easy, Scott. Easy, fella. Most of the way. Get We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's what the half of happy people have to say. Weeding, oh, weeding, send the doo 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 and okay, okay. And that's the truth. Take California champions, for instance. Now, way out west, you'll hear us talking about a quarterback we call Van Brocklin. A passing star with weedy style who throws that ball a country mile. And Duke Snyder, too, is a West Coast man, a fancy slugger and a Wheaties fan who takes his bat and scares them all when he knocks the hide right off the ball. Now, these two champions know that there's big energy in their favorite cereal because there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be do 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 and okay, okay. Now to continue Later that night the sheriff and his deputy Sat in the sheriff's office Discussing the events of the evening When Rich, brother, you're... Hey what the A masked man and engine Close the door Toto. Uh, Minister you're the nerviest hombre I ever saw Coming in here like this We're not outlaws I came here to explain to you Sorry it must be done at gunpoint you see, Hunter and I came here to help find that outlaw gang. To help find the gang? Him, Lone Ranger, Sheriff. What? What's that you say? Him, Lone Ranger. Me, Tonto. We come to find gang. Lone Ranger? I don't believe it, Sheriff. I still... Now, hold on, hold on. He must be. Look at those silver bullets and those fancy guns. And remember, he rides a big white stallion. Are you really the Lone Ranger, mister? That's right. Well, doggone it, why didn't you say so? You we... told me to shut up. <laughs> I don't take chances when men are holding guns. Uh, do we need these guns now? No, no, of course not. I'm sorry about the misunderstanding. Oh, so your gun, Tonto. Uh-huh. You see, mister, we started out to hunt you after Ranch Hand reported you tried to gun him. That Ranch Hand is a member of a small outlaw gang, led by a man named Benton. Benton uses his ranch as a hideout for the gang while he works in the bank in town. Well, that's Willard Benton, the bank cashier. He's always been a quiet, steady sort of an hombre, I... I can't believe it. We, uh, we know for certain, Sheriff. That's right. Well, it's a surprise and a shock to me, mister. Yeah, to me, too. We found that there are five in the gang. Benton and his four so-called ranch hands. They plan to rob the stage tomorrow. We followed the man who had the wounded ear. We overheard them making their plans at the Benton bunkhouse. I thunder I'll take a big posse and catch him in the act. You'll not get Benton. He doesn't plan to be with him. I've uh, thought of a way you can get evidence against both Benton and his men. How? I suggest you let them rob the stage. What? Yes. Meantime, send a telegram to Stockton. Listen closely. This is my plan. Just after the bank opened the following morning, the deputy, who had been at the sheriff's office the night before, entered and spoke to Benton. Morning, Mr. Benton. Morning, deputy. I got a little private business needs attention. I'd like to talk to you in the office. Of course. Come with me. Sure. What's up, Sam? Plenty. Good thing you got me the job of deputy so I could spy for you. The masked man and engine came to see the sheriff last night. Briefly, the deputy told what had taken place. Then he said... He had the sheriff telegraph the Stockton Bank to send blank pieces of paper on the stage in place of the payroll. He figures the gang will grab the strong box and take it without opening it to your ranch. Yeah, that's what they would do. Go on. The sheriff and posse were to follow the stage, let the gang go through with the robbery, then follow them to the ranch and catch you and them with a stolen strong box. <laughs> Oh, they'll be surprised when there isn't any hold-up. Uh, let me finish. The masked man and engine have gone to Stockton. They're going to bring the cash in their saddlebag. They'll be on the trail some distance behind the stage. Fine. I'll ride out to the ranch and tell the men. They'll stay in hiding along the trail, let the stage and posse go by. Then when the masked man and Indian come along, they'll gun them and take the cash. I'll ride with them. We'll cover our trail and come back to town. <laughs> 
Benton and his men waited in hiding behind large boulders in Pine Valley. They watched the stage go by, followed shortly after by the sheriff and his posse. Meantime, a mile behind the posse, the Lone Ranger and Toto, with a payroll in their saddlebags, rode along the trail until they reached Pine Valley. A warm breeze was blowing toward them, and as they started up a rise a short distance from the boulders, the intelligent stallion Silver caught the scent of men and horses. Sensing danger, he broke his stride and whinnied a low warning. Oh, 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 oh. Silver, give warning, King Yes. We'll dismount and lead the horses back among the trees and brush. Then we'll move forward to the brush on foot to investigate. Let's go, easy. Let's go, easy. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Leaving Silver and Scout hidden in the tall brush under the trees, the Lone Ranger and Tonto moved on foot in a wide circle through the thick undergrowth. Tonto pointed, saying, Look, famous hubby, the men waiting with brown guns behind Big Boulder. They let the stage go by and molested they must be waiting for us, Tonto. Somehow, Benton learned of our plans. Ah. We'll creep up on them and take them by surprise. Come on. The masked man and Indian moved cautiously toward the waiting outlaws. Suddenly, a crow with a loud, cawing cry flew from a nearby tree. Benton turned just in time to catch a glimpse of a figure darting behind a large tree. Someone's sneaking up behind us. The outlaws fired as they took cover. The Lone Ranger and Tonto quickly returned their fire. One of them took a bullet. Ah. The odds are against us, Tonto, but we'll do what we can. At least we can stop them from getting to their horses. Meantime, Benton talked hurriedly to his men. Listen, all of you. Arizona's wounded in the leg and can't be of much help. I'm sure the two men back there are the Lone Ranger and the Indian. So am I. There are four of us. Arizona will stay here and use his gun to draw their fire. Two of us will crawl through the brush to one side, the other two to the other side. We'll try to circle and get behind them, understand? Yeah, yeah boss. Russ, yeah. when one of the men go to the left, I'll go with the other man to the right. Move quietly and cautiously. We must get those two hombres before they have the chance to get us. Now, let's go. Come on. In spite of his leg wound, Arizona continued to fire toward the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Tonto, I think only one man is firing at us. Ah. Keep your eyes open. The others may be trying to creep up on us through the brush. The two men hurriedly scanned the surrounding terrain. Then suddenly... Down, Tonto. That shot came from behind us. The masked man and Indian crouched in the brush. They realized they were in a dangerous position between the men firing from the boulders and those behind them. Using their guns now would divulge their location. They crouched in the brush and waited tensely. Then... Riders coming from town, Kimasabi. Look, the men running from behind us toward the boulders. The outlaws are heading for their horses. Use your guns. Uh A bullet hit the outlaw, Russ, and before the others could reach the horses, the sheriff and his posse moved in, firing as they came. Right, Benton on, and his men, caught between the Lone Ranger and Tonto and the posse, fought desperately, but were soon forced to give up. A short time later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto mounted Silver and Scout and joined the posse. Oh, Silver. Oh, 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 easy, steady. Good work, Sheriff. Thanks, mister. When nothing happened to the stage, I figured something was wrong, so we backtracked. And we got them all, including Benton. Somehow they found out about our plan. In fact, I think I know who tipped them off. Reach, Debbie. What? Hey, hold on. You were recommended to me by Benton some months ago. And since then, the outlaw gang knew every move I made. We'll get plenty of evidence against Benton and his men before we're through. So if you're smart, you'll talk and maybe get leniency from the court for turning state's evidence. Well, I don't know anything. I'm as surprised about Benton as you are. He's lying. Benton placed him with you as a spy for the game. Shut up, Russ. No. If there's something to be gained by talking, I'll talk. You thought you were smart, Benton. Smart enough to get the masked man ninja out of the way. Sheriff, you'll find plenty of evidence of past robberies at his ranch house. Sheriff, he's lying. Uh, I learned my ranch hands were operating as a gang. I followed them out here today and... He's to the come... one who's lying. I did tell him about the plans. Benton leads the gang. Now he's trying to save his own skin. That's right. right. Sheriff, I think you have the evidence you need. How do I'll go on ahead to Rock Point for the payroll? Let me meet you later. Adios, everybody. Bye. You fools. If you men had done the job you were supposed to do last night and surprised those two men at their camp, this wouldn't have happened. <laughs> You're the fool, Benton. You may be plenty clever at pulling the wool over the eyes of other folks. But you sure were mighty stupid to think you could ever get the best of the Lone Ranger.
The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is produced by Kendall Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.